good morning students today in this lecture we are going to learn about new topics of benson and loeffler boiler's working principles coming to the first topic see in the first topic about benson boiler we are going to know the construction and working principle here before going to know the construction and working principle we should know that what is meant by latent heat see here latent heat means nothing but of converting solid into liquid or vapor form or a liquid into vapor without change of temperature means without changing any temperature we are going to change the solid form into liquid form or vapor form or a liquid into an vapor form is nothing but of a latent heat as we are using this latent heat here in the benson boiler i have told you that before going to the topic i have told you about the latent heat what is meant by latent heat here and coming to the working principle of this benson boiler see here it works on the principle that the pressure of the water is increased to the super critical pressure that is above critical pressure of 225 bar see here the pressure of water is going to be increased about the pressure of 225 bar here in the benson boiler when the pressure of water is increased to the super critical level the latent heat of water becomes zero and due to this it directly changes into steam without boiling here in this boiler without uh, boiling uh, the water what is the water which we are feeding here is directly converted into the steam here in the benson boiler see here and this prevents the formation of bubbles at the tube surface here the bubbles are also not been formed here in this benson boiler in this process less heat is required to convert water to steam as water is already just above critical pressure and hence less fuel is required see here uh, the fuel which we are using here for the combustion process uh, is uh, very less we can use very less fuel here and uh, less heat is also required to convert water to steam here as water is already just above critical pressure this is what uh, which we are uh, studying before uh, we are going to know the working principle of the benson boiler that uh, we can study here that we are knowing that the pressure the benson boiler uh, pressure is going to be increased up to 225 bar in this benson boiler and uh, it is directly converted into steam without boiling as the pressure is going to be increased here in the benson boiler and uh, the bubbles are all not formed here and the water uh, is already just above critical pressure hence the fuel is uh, required is very less here and uh, less heat is required uh, to convert the water into steam here coming to here we can observe the benson boiler diagram here that the cold water the cold air from the atmosphere by using of this blower or by using of this pump circulating pump we are going to feed the cold air into the evaporator see here into the evaporator here and uh, here uh, air preheater the cold air from the blower is fed into the air preheater where the preheater uh, heats the air and uh, it sends the hot air into the furnace for combustion process see again here by using of uh, by using of this circulating pump we are going to feed water feed we are going to feed water into the economizer where here the economizer is going to heat the feed water and it sends the hot water hot feed water into the into the radiant superheater where the superheater evaporates and converts this into steam and here this steam is again convert uh, is again entered into the convective superheater and uh, from this uh, convective superheater it again transfers to the turbine where some work has been going to be takes place 
here this is what about the benson boiler which we can observe here that the feed water by using of the circulating pump we are going to send the feed water into the economizer in the economizer some heating has heating uh, reheating has been takes place and uh, it circulates uh, the feed water into the radiant superheater and uh, the in the radiant superheater the feed water is going to be evaporated and converts into steam and uh, from these uh, um, evaporator uh, it evaporates the steam is going to be taken into or enters into the convective superheater and from the convective superheater it directly enters uh, into the turbine this is what uh, about the benson boiler uh, diagram see here the parts of the benson boiler which we have, we can observe here is nothing but a feed pump economizer turbine and radiant superheater convective superheater four cylinder circulating pump see here benson chamber this is the outermost chamber of benson boiler in which all the parts of benson boilers are kept see water feed pump benson boiler is a four cylinder pump water tube boiler water enters into boiler at a critical pressure water feed pump is used to supply the water inside the boiler at a super critical pressure of 225 bar as i have said you that these uh, uh, feed pump uh, see here water into the boiler at critical water feed pump is used to supply water inside the boiler at a super critical pressure of 225 bar means uh, we are sending uh, pumping the water feed water into the boiler with a super critical pressure of 225 bar here what is uh, water feed pump means which we are feeding which we are feeding water into the boiler by using of this pump we are feeding water into the boiler by using of this pump how much water we are feeding means see that water inside the boiler at a super critical pressure with the 225 bar pressure the feed water is supplied into the boiler here and uh, coming to the next component uh, our next part in the benson boiler we are using here see here we you can observe the diagram here first one is the feed pump see here that is what we are studied about the feed pump and uh, the second one is uh, see here feed pump after feed pump the second part which we are using here is nothing but of economizer economizer means when the water feed pump so feed pump feeds the water these water before entering into the tube first passes through economizer which uses the combustion gases to preheat the water which also increases the efficiency of water here the water before entering into the tube first passes through the economizer which uses the combustion gases to preheat the water see here here when it enters into the economizer here we are having grate from the grate uh, if we are doing some combustion process the heat which has been generated here by using of that uh, heat uh, the water which is coming out uh, from the feed pump uh, uh, and enters into the economizer the water feed water is going to be heated here and it is going to be circulated into the radiant superheater see here this water before entering into the tube first comes before economizer it is going to come to the economizer which uses the combustion gases to preheat the water which also increases the efficiency of the water here see when the water feed water See here when the feed water enters into the economizer here some combustion is going to be takes place when combustion has been takes place the hot gases are moving upward in the upward direction due to the upward direction so see the wa feed water which is coming from the feed pump the water inside the economizer is heated here here the he um, in the economizer the hot water which is coming from the feed pump is again heated here in the economizer and this is again recirculated to the radiant superheater we can observe see we are using here the blower blower blow air into the air preheater and air preheater will heat the air and again and a hot air will be out this hot air will be used in the furnace for further process see here we are using the blower 
blower what is the blower means the blower is used to feed cold water into the preheater here preheater means nothing but of it is again reheating what are the hot gases coming up uh, due to the combustion process the hot gases will raise in the upward direction when the hot gases are going to be raised in the upward direction the cold air inside the air preheater is uh, again heated here and uh, it gives uh, out uh, the hot air from the air preheater and the uh, hot air is used in the furnace for combustion processes this is what uh, which we are what we are studying about uh, the blower and coming to the air preheater preheats the air before entering into the furnace the preheated air increases the burn burning efficiency of the fuel that uh, air heat preheater means nothing but of before entering into the furnace it is preheated here what i have shown you here that see here these pre it is the preheater preheater means nothing but of before entering into the furnace we are going to preheat the air and uh, we are giving the hot air to the furnace for uh, getting the more efficiency see here for getting the for getting uh, for increasing the burning efficiency of the fuel see here radiant superheater we are using radiant superheat heats the water with radiation produced by burnt fuel it raises the temperature of water to supercritical temperature see here we are using the radiant superheater radiant superheater means nothing but of what are the hot flue gases produced from the combustion by using of this combustion combustion what are the hot gases which has been produced from the combustion by using of that hot gases the water feed water which enters into this radiant superheater it uh, uh, converts uh, the feed water into steam formation see here we can observe that see here it heats the water with radiation produced by the burn fuel it raises the temperature of the water to supercritical temperature means the water uh, it is used to raise the temperature of water to up to the supercritical temperature see here and uh, we are using convection evaporators here evaporator here in the convection evaporator convection is used to transfer heat from the flue gases to the water see here you can observe here the convective superheater means in the convective superheater means heat exchange takes place that the flue gases are going to pass or the hot gases are going to move upward direction when the, when it moves in the upward direction what is the steam here in the what is the steam which uh, is having inside the convective superheater is going to heat is going to be heated see here we can observe that uh, in the convection evaporator convection is used to transfer heat from the flue gases to the water see in the as evaporator the water evaporates completely uh, convecting superheater convecting superheat is the last chamber in boiler boiler through which benson boiler which is the heated steam passes it superheats the steam to the desired temperature and the superheated steam is taken out from the for the industrial work this is uh, what we can observe in the diagram itself that the cold air enters into the air preheater here the air preheater heats uh, uh, the air and it sends out with the hot air and the feed pump uh, sends uh, the feed water into the economizer this economizer heats up the water feed water and it's again uh, sent to the benson boiler benson uh, see here it again sent to the radiant superheater and through the so radiant superheater it enters into the convective superheater and from the convective heater it enters into the turbine see here construction the first and biggest part in benson boiler is nothing but of a benson chamber inside there is a chamber inside see here inside this chamber other parts are kept blower is connected to the air preheater what i have showed you here blower is blower is connected to the air preheater and uh, um, below air preheater feed pump is present below feed pump air preheater is present 
air below the air predator we are having feed pump uh, feed pump is connected to the economizer and transfers water to the economizer the feed pump is connected to the economizer and passes water from to the economizer and uh, the economizer is connected to the radiant superheater see the economizer is connected to the radiant superheater radiant super is presented at bottom of the benson chamber the radiant super is connected to convective super heater which is finally connected to the turbine what we have shown in the diagram and uh, this is what uh, about the working principle of the benson boiler that uh, in benson boiler we are not using steam and water drop in benson boiler we are not using steam and water drop it will directly convert water into steam see here the water is directly converted into steam here in the benson boiler boiler will start working and it will blow air into the preheater what i have shown you there blower will start working and it will blow air into the air preheater and air preheater will heat the air and the hot air will be out what i have shown you in the diagram that air from the blower is sent air into the air preheater where the air preheater heats and gives out the hot air what we are studying here is the first step here and this hot air will be used in the furnace for further process this is what about the first step and the second one is about the feed pump how it works here the feed pump increases the pressure of the water to the supercritical pressure and then water enters into the economizer so here we can observe here the feed pump feeds the water to the economizer see the feed pump increases the pressure of the water to the supercritical pressure and then water enters into the economizer in the economizer the water is preheated <coughs> using the combustion gases to increase the efficiency of the boiler see here we can observe here the economizer by using the hot gases it is going to heat the feed water which is coming from the feed pump and it is directly sent into the radiant superheater and uh, see here super uh, in the economizer the water is preheated using the combustion gases to increase the efficiency of the boiler next step 3 is nothing but of super heater see from uh, economizer from economizer water process to the radiant superheater in the radiant superheater what is happening there water is heated using radiant heat transfer method here heat is transferred from combustion chamber to water and water will partially converted into steam and partially it will stay in the liquid form see here in the radiant superheater it is going to be converted into steam and uh, uh, partially in the liquid form the liquid form then this partial vapor and the liquid will go to the convective superheater after from the radiant superheater this will transfer into the this from the radiant superheater it is going to be transferred to the convective superheater see here this is the step 4 in the convective superheater it will be fully converted into vapor or steam and this superheated steam will go to the prime mover and rotate the turbine this is the working of benson boiler i hope you have understand this benson boiler very well and uh, coming to the benson boiler they are having some advantages that it is lightweight and it has no drum uh, for this reason it is lighter than another boiler its starting time is less than other boiler and it uh, has up to 90% thermal efficiency these are the advantages as it has not required the drum it is also very low cost see here about uh, the disadvantages which is having for benson boiler are due to super critical types of boiler its controlling need to monitor every time for preventing an explosion due to super critical types of boilers this we need to control every time for preventing an explosion boiler control for the variable load is difficult see the, these are some of the applications where we are using uh, these benson boiler in different industries to generate stream for the production of electricity or mechanic for
for getting production of electricity or for mechanical power we are using this benson boiler in different industries the average operating pressure temperature and capacity of benson boiler is 650 degrees celsius 250 press bar and 135 tons per hour and uh, here the temperature is going to be 650 degrees celsius in benson boiler and the pressure is going to be maintained at 250 degree is pressure 250 bar and uh, we are having an 135 tons per hour we are going to generate the steam here this is what about the benson boiler and once again i am going to explain you about this benson boiler that how it works from the bow blower the air cold air is enters into the preheater where the preheater preheats uh, the air which has been came from the blower and it gives out hot air in hot air out and the hot air out which has been came out is used in the furnace for the combustion process and the feed water the feed water is going to be feeded into the economizer through this feed pump and this economizer the feed water which comes into the economizer is preheated as the hot flue gases are flowing in the upward direction and the hot flue gas due to this hot flue gases what are the feed water which has been heated is enters into the radiant superheater here in the radiant superheater it is going to be converted or evaporated into partially vapor and and it is converted into steam and what is the a uh, vapor or steam which has been produced here is going to be entered into the convective superheater here in the convective super it is uh, converted fully into the steam and it is going to entered into the turbine for rotation purpose this is what about the benson boiler which we can study so coming to the next uh, boiler we are having here loffler loffler boiler loffler boiler is nothing but of we can observe uh, the diagram of the loffler boiler here in the same way here we are having the blower from the blower uh, we are going to send a hot uh, cold air we are going to send cold air by using of this blower into the air preheater into the air preheater where the air preheater preheats the air which has been came from the blower and it uh, is used to gives out the hot air to the for uh, the combustion process for the combustion process and uh, here the feed water from hot well is going to feed means the feed water is by using of this feed pump uh, is sent into the economizer here we can observe that it is going to be sent into the economizer in the economizer it preheats uh, the water which is coming from the which is coming from the feed pump and after heating the feed water is sent into the evaporating drum in the evaporating drum it evaporates the feed hot water or feed water which has been coming from the economizer enters into the evaporating drum and here it evaporates and converts it into the saturated steam see here and converted into the saturated steam the saturated steam is sent Uh, here, sixty-five percent of saturated steam uh, is uh, sent into the. Uh, com uh, see here, is uh, sent into the radiant superheated. Radiant superheated means nothing but of, which uh, radially, um, radially. What are the hot gases? By using of these hot gases, the saturated steam is going to be heated uh, in this uh, tube. see here from the radiant superheater after heating has been takes place it is uh, moves or enters into the convective superheater where here uh, the partially the partial steam the saturated steam is uh, converted into superheated steam see from the convective superheater see it enters into the high pressure steam turbine from the convective superheated it is enters into the high pressure steam turbine from the high pressure uh, and uh, 35 percent of the superheated steam is entered uh, through high pressure turbine and 65 percent of superheated steam is uh, again uh, recirculated into the evaporating drum here and uh, by uh, mixing of the superheated steam as well as the saturated steam 
it is uh, mixing of the superheated steam and this feed water is going to be converted into the saturated steam here from the superheated steam which has been came out with the 35 percent is again sent into the see here again sent into this steam heater again sent into the steam heater uh, steam reheater where the steam has been reheated and it's again circulated into the low pressure steam turbine and again it has been sent into the low pressure steam turbine where it has been exhausted from low pressure steam turbine it's exhausted steam to the condenser this is what uh, about the low flare boiler which we can observe here again once again i am going to explain the diagram of this low flare boiler that uh, see here the cold air enters into the boiler and by using of this uh, pump we are going to feed the cold air into the air preheater where the air preheater preheats the air and gives out the hot air to for the combustion chamber see here and the feed water by using of this feed pump is used uh, to transfer the feed water into the economizer in the economizer the feed water is going to be heated by using of the flue gases and uh, from the um, economizer after preheating the feed water it again enters into the evaporating drum see here in the evaporating drum um, due to uh, due to uh, the feed water is going to be evaporated here and the saturated steam is entered 65% so of the saturated steam is super uh, saturated steam is going to be entered into the radiant superheater radiant superheater means nothing but of uh, radially it is going to absorb the hot gases and what is the superheated steam entered uh, passing through this tube is going to be um, heated and uh, the superheat radiant superheat from the radiant superheater the steam is going to be entered into the convective superheater here uh, in the convective superheater it is uh, converted uh, fully into the liquid form and it is again uh, uh, sent into the high pressure steam uh, 35 percent of superheated steam is entered into the high pressure steam turbine and uh, 65 percent of uh, superheated steam is going to be entered uh, into the evaporating drum here uh, the feed water and the superheated steam both are going to be mixed and uh, is going to give the saturated steam this saturated steam is again circulated into the radiant superheater and what is this 35 percent of superheated coming out from the convective superheater is again enters into the steam reheater and after reheating the steam here in the convey steam reheater it again sends uh, into the enters into the low pressure steam turbine here the turbine rotates and uh, uh, the exhaust steam to the and after that uh, it exhausts the steam to the condenser this is what about the buffer boiler so here the construction the construction or main parts which we are using here is nothing but of uh, the blower see feed pump economizer radiant superheated uh, steam reheater convective superheater we are studying it one by one in stepwise that uh, economizer economizer is used it preheats the feed water be before entering into the operating drum before entering into the operating drum the water is the feed water is going to be preheats and operating drum it is placed at lower portion of the boiler it contains the mixing nozzle here the feed water is converted into saturated steam see here in the operating drum the see here here the feed water is converted into saturated steam with the help of superheated steam with the help of the superheated steam the feed water is converted into saturated steam see here and the steam circulating it is present in between the evaporating drum and radiant superheater it circulates the steam into boiler radiant superheated superheats the steam with the help of radiance produced by the burnt air. see here radiant superheater see radiant superheat means this is the great upon the great some combustion process has been takes place 
after a complete combustion has been takes place the hot gases are going to rise upward as the hot gases are going to be raised up the steam which is the super saturated steam which is entering or traveling in this pipe is going to be preheated here by the burn fuel in the boiler see here convert to convert to super heater super heats the steam to the desired temperature of 500 degrees celsius see mixing now that it is present inside the evaporating drum it mixes the steam from the super heater with the feed water and evaporates them see working of the low flow boiler what i have explained you there i am showing in the point where in low flow boiler the feed pump forces the water to enter into the economizer and the economizer preheats the feed water and then it is passed to the evaporator drum see what i have shown you in the diagram These are the point I have written here in the points wise. See the operator drum has nozzles. The two by third of the superheated steam from the superheater enters into the nozzles of the operator drum, and nozzle mixes the superheated steam with the feed water. This changes the feed water into saturated steam. This saturated steam is then drawn into the from the operating drum by steam circulating drum, and allows it to pass through the radiant superheater the radiant superheater superheats the saturated steam with the help of radiation energy produced from the burning of the fuel the radiant superheater tubes are placed in furnace the heat we transfer to the water takes place to the radiant to the radiation produced after the radiation superheater the steam is passed to the convective superheater this is what what i have explained you here in the diagram these are the points sir uh, which i have wrote here in points wise see and uh, coming to the advantages coming to the advantages we are having some advantages uh, that it can use uh, salt water for steam generation it can use salt water for steam generation the problem of deposition of sedimentation and scale in the boiler tubes are eliminated it is compact in size means uh, uh, the salt water uh, we are using for steam generation here uh, in this low uh, flow boiler and uh, the sedimentation and scale means nothing but of uh, corrosion uh, which has been formed in the boiler tubes are also eliminated here and it is compact in size there some of the disadvantages of this low flow boiler are the bubble formation decreases the heat transfer rate due to the heat transfer rate water the bubbles uh, which has been formed in the feed water are going to be decreased here the operating drum is used which improves the overall cost and also makes it heavier operating drum which we are using improves the overall cost these are the some of the advantages and disadvantages of low flow boiler in this video we have learned about the two boilers working principles construction and working principles about the benson boiler as well as an low flow boiler as well as the low flow boiler see here we have uh, have explained you about the construction working principle of benson boiler advantages and disadvantages and uh, benson boiler application and uh, we have learned about the low flow boiler working principle construction and main parts uh, and a uh, working principle and uh, we i have explained you about the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, low flow boiler this is what uh, in this video which we have studied uh, about uh, the low flow boiler as well as uh, the benson boiler if you are having any doubts please call to me or mail to this mail id thank you in the next class we are going to learn the mountings and accessories of this boiler thank you